Hey, yo, where Nick at? Back there in the cut. Urban Star, head coach, Calhoun School, Lita Hashi, Alabama. So my name is Karima Collins, Coach Collins, Miss Collins. Uh, I'm the athletic director here at Calhoun High School. I also assist with the boys varsity, and I used to be the B-team basketball coach, and I'm passing the torch over to someone else this year. Um, as far as Jadarian Davidson, JD, uh, I used to teach him last year. He was in my English class. And I'm also, I guess I consider myself to be one of his coaches and mentors. Uh, my first encounter of JD, uh, I had heard rumors about this young kid, ninth grader, that was gonna be playing here at Calhoun School. I hadn't actually ever met him. And so he was telling me about this kid at the middle school named JD. About three weeks before basketball season started, uh, his freshman year, and then he came into the gym. And again, I've heard all the hype about JD. I've never seen him in person. And then he came in for tryouts and I saw this kid with this big, huge mohawk. mohawk. But at the time it was like a smaller version of the mohawk now. Kind of slender, you know, it was about 6'2". And I'm like, okay, this is supposed to be the guy that's gonna, you know, lead us to the promised land. And again, nothing special about him until we started, you know, the layup line and everybody else is doing layups. And then he went up. And that was when I was like, yes, Lord, please don't let me mess this up. I knew he was special at that point when I seen his elbow above the rim just doing layups. He didn't actually dunk the ball. He just was jumping that high doing layups. So that was my first interaction with J.D. Davis. And so I met him at a basketball game. He came over to the varsity game and coach introduced me. He was like, well, you know, at the end of the season, they would always move up some of the um, middle school players. And so immediately, um, when we saw him practice and work out, I was like, Coach, he definitely cannot uh, play on the B team. I, I mean, he's good enough for the varsity already. So he ended up playing, moving up and playing with the varsity. And so my first interaction was Coach, like I said, introducing me, and he was like kind of very mild-mannered, didn't want to say much. That's kind of how he is now. Um, but he was smiling, the big smile. Um, and then I went to see him at a middle school game, and I was just thinking this kid is going to be awesome. Well, J.D., where he's progressed the most is uh, his leadership. Again, you know, he was probably, not probably, but by far the best player on the team uh, and sometimes the best player on the court, regardless of who we're playing each night. But he was, you know, a freshman. He was 15 years old. He didn't want to take, you know, the spotlight, you know, back then. And he didn't really want to tell his teammates who were, you know, seniors and juniors. He didn't want to be that guy, you know, telling them what to do at point in time. But even though he was our point guard, I kind of pushed him, you know, to the point where he was, you know, as a sophomore, I, I made him a team captain, even though he didn't want to be a team captain. He even asked coach, could you pick somebody else? And I was like, nah, because going forward, I mean, this is what you're going to do. If you're going to be a point guard, you're going to, you know, most of the time you're going to be asked to be a team captain because you're an extension of that coach on that team. So. Leadership-wise and uh, his confidence to lead a team, that's where he's progressed the most. Yeah, JB. What you thought was? He has the ability to uh, make a big impact on the peers that are around him. Yes, he's kind of shy, so I, I do have his video clip that I, I still have of him where he had to present in front of the class. Um, and so when he got up to come present, it was kind of funny. but. He, uh, he owned it. He got up here. You can tell he was kind of nervous, but he just, you know, did his part, made a couple of jokes, and then he started reading, and everybody was, like, really into it. So once they saw him do his part, um, the other kids, they kind of, you know, latched on and onto the assignment because some of the other shy kids, once they see him do things, they'll kind of step up and say, well, J.D. got up in front of the class and did it, so, you know, we're going to do it. Wow. He led the team in every major statistical category his freshman year. So rebounding, steals, block shots, uh, points per game, rebounds per game. He led us in everything. I'm trying to remember of a stat that he didn't lead us as a freshman. He exploded, he exploded from sophomore to junior year from less than 19 points a game to 
what you saw this year, 33 points a game. And the crazy part about it is it's always been there. But, you know, again, J.D. is very unselfish. He didn't want to be that guy that was leading the team in points. You know, he wanted to distribute the ball to his friends and his teammates so that, you know, everybody, you know, could get their shine. You know, and if, you know, if we could have got him and encouraged him to be that savage dog that he was this year as a freshman, you know, he could have easily averaged 25 points a game as a freshman. You know, but that wasn't his mentality. There were a couple of guys that I coached in uh, Georgia. Austin Donaldson was a great point guard. He graduated from uh, Jonesboro High School in Georgia. Uh, I coached him. He went on to Georgia State and played point guard there. I always compared JD to him and another kid that was actually on the same team. Uh, MJ Walker, who was a uh, McDonald's All-American Junior Olympian and ended up at Florida State. He's getting ready to be a senior at Florida State. Uh, had an opportunity to coach those two guys. And, and I always tell people, I think JD's probably a hybrid between those two guys. You know, both of those guys were champions, uh, multiple, you know, won mo multiple championships in Georgia. And Austin's IQ and ball handling and distribution of the ball as a point guard reminds me of JD. And then the ability to get to the basket, create his own shot, and dominate a game, that kind of reminds me of MJ Walker. And that's a combination of who he is to me because I've personally, you know, coached those guys, watched those guys mature and seen them go off to college and whatnot, still kind of close with their families. And, and JD's a combination of that. Forgot what month it was, but we had a, uh, an away game in Tuscaloosa against Central Tuscaloosa. And when we went up there, JD had his backpack on, and uh, I think it was one of his uh, backpacks from, from his AAU uh, season. And what JD used to do was he would put the little tags that, you know, he'd get when he goes to those AAU tournaments, and he would lash them onto his, excuse me, his uh, backpack. And... Again, you know, especially this past year, wherever J.D. went, you know, he's getting asked for autographs and he's getting asked for, you know, pictures and whatnot. And I think this was probably the first time a kid came up and asked one of J.D. for one of those tags that was, and I was like, yeah, J.D.'s not giving up one of those. And I mean, without, but without hesitation, he dropped the bag, he took it off, he gave it to the kid and, you know, patted him on the back, took a picture with him and, he moved on, you know. I might get a little emotional. All right, so like the first real time when we went to um, Illinois, um, ugh. so he had all these people that wanted to sign autographs, and he signed every last autograph. Like, I don't care if it was 25 people in the line, he signed every, my bad, he signed every like one, like autograph. So to me, that was amazing. I mean, I saw him give a kid the shirt off his back and like sign it. Um, like one kid took his shoes off and he was like, mom, can he sign my shoes? And she was like, no, you know. So eventually he talked his mom into letting JD sign his shoes. Like, so no matter how many people asked JD for an autograph, he signed it. So after a lot of our games there, even though we weren't the most competitive team, like when we walked in the gym, everybody just gravitated. We had a couple games where people stood up the whole game and we could be losing. We went to, um, we also went to like a Thanksgiving dinner because we were there for Thanksgiving. And when we walked in, there were little kids like, there's JD, there's JD, and he hugged. If they wanted to hug, he hugged. If they wanted a picture, he did it. So I've never seen him turn someone down for an autograph. Or, and one other time that was really amazing, we had played in Greenville and we went to Wendy's after the game and this kid, went crazy. He was like, Mom, JD's here. He called his brother on the phone. And he was about maybe 10 years old. And JD took his shirt off and gave him his shirt, you know, and signed it or whatever. And I thought, I just think that those um, acts are amazing. Uh, and a lot of people don't know that about him. They just look at him and say, oh, he's just a kid that's, you know, has the opportunity to do great things. He's blessed. But at the same time, he's um, very humble which um, I'm learning to like tattoos a little more. I remember when I first saw that humble, I'm like, oh. But you know, everybody's doing it, so 
it's not that bad. And I like the fact that he did. It does in, it empower who he is. He is a humble kid. I don't care what anybody says. And I'm not just saying it because I've been around him. Um, uh, and I've been had the opportunity to be able to coach him in some capacity. He's very, very humble. We don't have anyone other than JD over six feet. So, but we can't make him the center. But he was our center, especially defensively, you know. And we kind of, I'm not saying we, you know, we put him out there as, you know, as a scapegoat or a decoy, or anything like that. But we put him in the middle of our defense. So it kind of made people think, okay. As long as we can get by him, you know, we're going to be okay. And if we put a big man on the smaller guy that's behind him, we're going to be okay. Well, that's easier said than done because, like I said, J.D. Davidson, athletically, you know, regardless of your height, he's going to affect his shot because of how high he can jump. And, you know, you know a lot of folks don't understand he has extremely long arms. So he's going to be effective as far as altering shots or blocking shots. Uh, you know, and then again, it helped with, you know, give the confidence to the guys that were behind them, whoever it may be. You know, like we had uh, Trayvon Brown this past year. You know, he's 5'11, he weighed 140 pounds, you know, a slim guy. But, you know, with JD in front of you, it gives you a, a boost of confidence. Like, okay, I got him in front of me. As long as I got him in front of me, I'm going to be all right back here. So if JD doesn't actually get it, and, but the shot is altered. He knows, hey, we get the rebound. So he actually led us in rebounds. But, you know, thanks to J.D. being in front most of the time, he reaped the benefits of uh, getting all those rebounds, and, you know, and even on offense. You know, if, you, if you're on offense, J.D., you know, he's going to set some picks. He's going to get on the block every once in a while. And, uh, you know, it, again, he wasn't the decoy per se, but – we didn't list him as a center. You know, if you looked at our book or if you looked at any time we put our starting lineup up there, it's all, the, all the positions were G. We're going to be up uh, the Battle of the Bluff. It'll be uh, in Memphis, uh, and that'll be in uh, October, early October, excuse me, early November. Uh, and then we got some showcases up in uh, Huntsville. Uh, then we uh, have... Uh, I think we have hoops giving. That's going to be in Atlanta during the week of Thanksgiving there. That's going to be a great tournament. And then we have the uh, Sugar Bowl Classic Tournament down in uh, New Orleans uh, just after uh, New Year's. So we have some great tournaments lined up with uh, some great competition. And, again, that was one of the decisions last year's schedule. We made the schedule, you know, very tough. You know, it wasn't pretty on our record. You know, a lot of people, again, when we went into the uh, semifinals and championships in Birmingham, nobody gave us much of a chance to win. You know, uh, you know, it may have been a, outside of the team, the coaches, it was probably, you know, people, you know, few enough to count on my hands that actually believed that we were going to win a championship. It just, and it was based on our record and kind of, you know, again, we, we had a losing record most of the season last year until January. So a lot of people, you know, they look at the record and they go like, man, these guys aren't, they're not good enough because, you know, if they've lost 12 games, how are you going to win a championship? But they didn't look at the schedule and see who the 12 games were against. Again, once we went to, you know, Illinois, we're playing some of the top teams in the country, you know. And then when we go with Huntsville, 
you know, we're playing some tough teams, and, and then, you know, Central Tuscaloosa, we're playing 6A teams, we're playing 7A teams, 5A teams. We didn't play a consistent, you know, schedule of playing teams that, you know, that were 2A or 1A, things like that, to after January. So once we got to that point and we got on a roll and started winning, we knew that, okay, we're ready. You know, we're ready to compete for a championship, whether anybody else believes us or not. But, you know, it, you know, as they say, it is what it is. And it's probably going to be similar this year. I don't know what the record's going to look like. I know it's another tough schedule. And, and we do that just to prepare ourselves to win a championship. So, again, I know a lot of people want to be able to win a championship and have undefeated or very low, you know, few losses on their record. But... Me, just me, as an individual, I think, man, that as long as you get the championship and, and I have the ring and the trophy, I really ain't worried about what the record looked like, so. JD's ceiling. I've actually thought about that one for a long time. And I'm not saying, you know, because there's been some greats. You know, I'm talking about the GOATs. And when I say the GOATs, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to compare him to LeBron, MJ, KD, Kobe, Dr. J, anybody else. The big old, I'm not trying to compare J.D. Davis to any of those guys. I'm just talking about what I've seen personally and in person, up close. J.D. Davidson, and I said this when he was a sophomore. I told, I think it was uh, one of the, I think it may be an AL.com or something. I think we had lost the semifinal game to uh, Sacred Heart. And I told one of the uh, newspapers then, J.D. Davidson, may be the best athlete I've ever seen. And that means in person with my own eyes. Again, I compared him to anybody. I think by now most people kind of consider him, at least from the state of Alabama, one of their top two or three athletes that they've ever seen, you know, in person. You know, we're not comparing him to Bo, Henry Ruggs, or Wallace, Gerald Wallace, anybody like that. But if you've seen J.D. Davis in person, you know he's a special athlete. Basketball-wise, you've seen the progression from just being able to get to the hold and a couple of nice passes to he can dominate the game on the defensive end with block shots and rebounds and steals. He can dominate the game on the offensive end with points and assists. Or he can do it both at the same time. And you're not going to be able to see too many basketball players, regardless of what era, in high school or on a, another level, and dominate like that, you know, and that's, I think that's one of the reasons he was, you know, picked as Gatorade Player of the Year and Mr. Basketball and, and the overall uh, All-State Player of the Year, you know, because, again, it takes a special kid to be able to, you know, A, be disciplined enough to say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to dominate on both ends of the court. I'm still going to be unselfish and have the ball available for my teammates. You know, for a kid, the dog gonna make that decision and go out there and produce on a nightly basis. You know, it's it's amazing. So his ceiling. Again, I'm not comparing him to MJ, Kobe, and LeBron, and all those guys. However, if he stays humble and he keeps the same work ethic that he has now, 
I wouldn't be surprised to hear his name in that conversation in uh, you know, 10 to 15 years. I ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. I ain't gonna say it. What you doing, bro? What you doing? You got 14. What about the first one? You got 14. 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 You got